Now, surely this is the right spot. That's right, Grover. This is the fiction section. Fiction means it's a made-up story. Oh, hey, Elmo, I bet we can find your Galactic Gale comic book here. This is just a portion of Bart Sabrell's footage. I'm wondering if some type of transparency was used to simulate the Earth. Let me know what you think here. We've, uh, Levin, we've lost our picture here now. Okay, uh, Apollo 11, Houston, we've got the picture very, back now. Very strange transition. Apollo 11, Houston, uh, here's us that, uh, we're seeing a view from outside, plus a little of the, uh, of the inside, the first you've taken the camera away from the left window. Now over. That's correct. We're uh, moving it back and uh, reconfiguring for uh, interior lighting. Roger. Mm -hmm. uh, we can still see the earth uh, through the left window, and it appears that uh, we can see a floodlight uh, off to the left, either that or some sun shafting through the hatch window. Ah, uh, now we're coming in. Uh, can't quite make out who that had. That's right, big Mike Collins there. Well, you got a little bit of. Yeah. It's a light Ah, uh, now we're coming in. Uh, can't, can't quite make that head. Ah, uh, now we're coming in. Uh, can't quite make out who that had. So, a key question is, why is it that the outside of the window appears so much brighter once the interior lighting is turned on? You see a hue of blue, which you assume is the Earth, but you must ask, is there another explanation? The reason this footage is considered key is because of the great distance that this craft supposedly is from the Earth. It's halfway to the moon, or over 130,000 miles from the Earth. Gotcha, and Buzz is doing the camera work this time. Uh, Roger, uh, it's uh, a little dark uh, now, Levin. Uh, maybe a, a bigger F-stop might help. You think Houston has to be nervous seeing some of that footage? It's a little dark in the interior of the cabin, but really bright outside. <laughs> just not sure what that represents there. Just pure blue outside. That's yeah, getting a lot better now, Levin. Uh, Mikey coming in uh, bye bye. I got a good. Can't really see any clouds. Is uh, Buzz holding your cue cards for you over? Cue cards have a no. Uh, I think uh, we're all learning to find our favorite little corner to, uh, to sit in. The zero G is very comfortable, but uh, after a while you get to the point where you sort of get tired of rattling around and banging off the ceiling and the floor and the side, so you. Uh, you tend to find a little corner somewhere and put your knees up or something like that. So the sun is seen from that window of the capsule. It is possible to analyze this video to determine if there is an interior match with the Apollo 11 capsule. Was it the Earth we saw through this window? Strange world, guys. Strange world. In the comments of the interview, I mentioned in a previous video an individual named Sunshine Walker states that he had met and spoken with Buzz Aldrin. Father had worked as a defense contractor who worked on parts of the Apollo missions. I later worked there and manufactured components for the shuttle missions. You have no idea the scale and level of development and engineering required to build and fly the Saturn V. The shuttle has been described as the most complex machine ever made by man. The idea that thousands of people would be working on a project 
across many multiple industries. Three eight-hour shifts per day for a hoax is not logical. We went there and came back. This man is disrespecting everyone who worked on those projects as well as the men who went to the moon themselves. Does the government lie to us? Probably more than we know, but the moon missions happened. That is a fact. This poor man is mistaken on so many levels that it's sad. To which I replied, can you explain the points brought up in this interview? Talk? The shadows? Michael Collins' son with a CIA threat? People are just trying to figure this out. I know compartmentalization can accomplish amazing things with federal law enforcement working directly with your leadership. And to that he provides an explanation partially to what I just showed you in a video. The shadows, the double ones, are reflections in the LEM window. The ones outside are from two sources of light. The sun and light reflected off the lunar surface. No stars in the sky. Bright surface, white clothes on subjects, cameras set to low exposure, or the pics would be whiteouts with no decent images. Look at the snow whiteout. This guy is bogus, making a few bucks talking garbage sci-fi. Okay, so now I'm just going to scrub a little bit through the footage to give you a perspective of what we're told is the appearance of the Earth at different points in time. I'm okay with the abbreviation for Greenwich Mean Time, GMT year 1969. I'm not sure what this is about as far as displaying the date or end time. So we have 115.98 to 130.198 and we'll go ahead and scrub forward. See a sleeping Michael Collins, I believe. I'm sure he's an Armstrong. Now we're 2354, 2131-2354, and 198 is the first heading, so I'm thinking we're within the same day, but 22 hours later. Remember the first one's 115. And so at, at this time, see the Earth's really, really far away. The first the Earth's like really close, it's like right there, boom, then really far away, like a dot in the distance. And you have these effects of trying to adjust the camera, determiner line appears believable to me. Then recalled, as I told you, we were really far away, but we kind of zoomed in. So really far away. Keep scrubbing, really far away again, but then you see this light here. Then you keep scrubbing, and all of a sudden, boom, your light turns on. Well, that might be really the case. It could just be that the shutter is adjusted to allow for greater light sensitivity. Then this causes overexposure of the earth. That's the thing I don't understand, is just the overexposure causing this huge brightness when we're so, so far away. Roger, Houston, Apollo 11, calling in from about 130,000 miles out, and uh, we'll zoom our camera in slowly, uh, get the most magnification we can, uh, over. Roger. And then they proceed to zoom in. Now, Bart Sabrell said in his documentary that an insert may have been removed during the recording, the insert creating this eastward terminator line. I go directly to the originally inspired documentary, A Plain Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon, to demonstrate this for you. Here they remove part of the crescent insert. Now I have to dispute this. I watched this a few times and I did not get a sense that something was removed. I'm going to play without the sound. So you still see a little bit of a crescent there, even after it was supposedly removed. Keep playing. Then we see this scene where the lights turn on, or I should say the iris is adjusted, such that that light becomes more evident. I ran out of time, so I'll have to end this review here, but I'll leave you with a few things. Here is a picture of the lunar module returning to connect with Michael Collins portion. And check this out. It's going to do like this sharp turn. Boom. This is through the use of alien gyroscope technology that's classified because I don't see any other method this could be accomplished given that there's no wind to thrust off against. Impressive nonetheless. Over 14 years ago, I had created a channel called My Tray Is Here. It is my second YouTube channel. There's only one video on it. Neil Armstrong was somewhat teary when he gave this speech. But during a portion in which Neil is holding back tears, his tone changed in such a way that I suspected it should be reversed to see if the subconscious mind reveals anything interesting. I'll play that portion of my old video from 2008. 
To you, we say, we have only completed a beginning. To you, we say... Yes, you wish. To you, we say... Yes, you wish. And so this reverse subliminal phraseology may apply to the statement that we have a group of students among America's best, or that we've only completed the very beginning. And so I'll conclude by playing that full clip in its context. The 25th anniversary of the event in 1994, Neil Armstrong made a rare public appearance and held back tears as he spoke these brief cryptic remarks before the next generation of taxpayers as they toured the White House. Today we have with us uh, a group of students among America's best. To you, we say, we have only completed a beginning. We leave you much that is undone. Very key phraseology. Uh, I recalled a commentator to my original clip stating something effective. There were kids in this audience, and so the kids were among America's best. Um, but I had interpreted to mean that he's regarding his fellow astronauts who was with him that in his unconscious mind, yes, you wished, was applying to that notion because he had guilt around the whole concept of the moonwalk. But this entire clip is oozing with a apparent guilt and, and hinted much that is undone. It's a very strange clip and kind of puts a capstone on the rest of this documentary. The funny thing happened on the way to the moon. Okay, we gotta go now. Take care. Bye.